Hey, what is it, guys? So, as promised, I'm going through now some of the OTS decklists that have been graciously submitted to me. Now they weren't submitted to me, I just had leftover paperwork from the event. Um, I was giving this one quite some time to go through, um, because uh, Matt wanted to do his deck profile before then, but Matt, you've had a few weeks, if not a month at this point, so... Free game, Rainer. Free game. So, he showed me originally this list um, over Facebook. I believe it was only came out three weeks before the OTS. And I understood the theory behind it, kind of. But there were certain parts of the deck that I did question, thinking, why this over other things? So I'll get into the deck and, well, shameless plug first. We're at a gaming cafe. We offer a safe and free to use space um, for anyone to come and geek out. When I was younger growing up, there was nowhere you could go and be a geek. You were, look, you were frowned upon being a geek, you hide the fact you were a geek. And now I think being a geek is something you should be proud of. And there should be a place where you can come and say, hey, I'm a geek. We've only been up for six months, but we've made quite an impact on people. Um, we have people who came in, who come in who wouldn't have dared to speak to anyone. And now they're coming in and they are thriving in our, uh, certain groups, winning competitions, making friends, and just, you know, all, all right, coming out of their shells. We are going to be building a sensory room for uh, if you've got sensory issues like uh, autism or anything, you can come in and bring your little ones. Halifax takes everything in its stride. Progressive, you know, change come along, we go with it. Something stops you, we move past it. Now that Shameless Plug is over, um, I'll get into the deck itself. Um, so he plays the one Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. This is for the Rainbow Bridge Salvation Search Field spell thing. Um, I did like the idea behind it, but I did also state to him, like, why don't you play the Cobalt Eagle instead? Because this has to search um, a Crystal Beast as well as the field spell. So if he plays the Cobalt Eagle, it can actually just put itself to the top of the deck. So then um, this one, well, the Rainbow Bridge will never be a brick. Um, then he plays the Dramatef, uh, two Happy, one of the new Horus, the Black Flame Deity, three Imseti, um, and that's all the Horus stuff that he plays for it. Oh, wait, no, there's one down here. And he plays, yeah, why not? I'm going to be able to pronounce that for, oh, yeah, not even going to attempt that. Um, so his Horus package is pretty nice, I'd say. It gives him enough access to everything that he needs. Um, to be able to just play rank 8 toolbox, which the rank 8 toolbox is really, really good when you get into the extra deck, because there's certain things that just, like, hit the format, as well as the fact that since he plays all of them, um, free spamming the board under King Sark is actually, like, really, really good, so, yeah, that's um, a thing. Um, then he plays the 1 Keldo, 3 Lava Golem, 2 Light and, Light and Darkness Dragon, uh, 1 Medora, and two of the Vision Resonate. So the muscle lineup, like, pretty good. Pretty good and standard for it. Um, the Vision Resonate is just to make the big chinging as well as the Baron. Um, and also it's great with the, red, uh, with the Crimson Gaia. Um, the only thing that I kind of thought when looking through his list was why he didn't play Vanity's Ruler or Majesty's Fiend. Because a lot of the stuff he can kind of live without activating monster effects. So if he goes like Horus, Horus, Majesties. The Horuses don't activate to bring themselves back. The Lava Golem, you don't really care about regardless. It's only really the Light and Darkness Dragon, the Medora, and the Keldo that kind of activate. But I can see why he wouldn't want to do it in going... Well, um, if he's going first or second. Uh, because you can't guarantee that he'll get into it. And later games, it's like, meh. But beyond that, yeah. Um... There was also one thing where I did kind of joke with him where he should play Plasma in the main because of Deforce. Because um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Deforce searches Plasma, and then while Plasma's on the field, your stuff can't be destroyed by card effects or targeted by card effects. So it works the same way as like the Light and Darkness Dragon thing, where you summon three of the Horus things, and then, yeah, you kind of have auto beat Runic because they can't actually out Plasma that's that, like that, because they don't have battle phases anyways, and Plasma just absorbs something. Then for the spells, there's the one Crimson Gaia, one Foolish Burial Goods. This is just for the um, Rainbow Bitch. And this is just like another terrifying three King Sark, one Mausoleum of the Emperor, which for those of you that aren't aware, this is a really old card. So basically, you can pay life points um, 
instead of tributing monsters. So you can pay a thousand to summon a level f- to summon something that requires one tribute, or you can pay two thousand to tribute summon something that requires two tributes instead of tributing your monsters, which is like really really good um, because you can just play this and then hard tribute light and darkness dragon after summoning Inseti and all the other stuff, and it's just one of those things. Um, it is by way back in the day. I think it's like two thousand and six. Come on, if I'm old, I remember playing this when um, the online Yu-Gi-Oh was a thing. If anyone actually remembers that really old simulator that was good by Konami, um, yeah, that was actually a good card that you could use to summon demon after level. Um, then two desires. He plays multiple three also. Didn't really matter. Terraforming um, to search for the great field spell of Mausoleum as well as the King Sark field spell. Trade in because this is rank eight toolbox, um, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Two triple tactics and three of the new field spell, Walls of the Imperial Tomb. This is basically just another King's Ark. Then he plays the third copy of Terraforming, effectively. Uh, one skill drain and triple summon limit. So all in all, I do actually rate the main deck. Um, the only thing that I think that I've changed about it is maybe I value the skill drains over the summon limits. Um... Yes, I do know Fire Dot Deck does have a way to out the um, to out the stuff with uh, the Kirin in the graveyard, but beyond that, I do actually think Skill Drain is more valued because um, it's like old Pendulum almost, where you summon a bunch of stuff. Well, not even old Pendulum, old Clay. Where you just summon a bunch of stuff, punch your opponent, and then you kind of win because you can keep on uh, Pendulum summoning from the grave and winning from there. Then onto the extra deck, uh, he plays one copy of the Wicked Avatar, which he played this over the Plasma. Um, Avatar is a very interesting card if you can draw it. So like a god card, it requires three tributes to tribute summon it. Um, but after it's tribute summoned, your opponent cannot activate spells or traps until the end of the second of their second end phase after this card's tribute summoned. Also, it gains its attack is uh, 100 more than whatever's on the field. So yeah, it will usually be 100 attack points more than the end setting because that's just the biggest thing on your field, on, on the field in general. Um, but he was playing this because... It was a slightly better anti-spell fragrance, which, yeah, I get that. But the thing is, um, drawing into this going first is kind of a bit more, I'd say, difficult. Um, yes, the desires is great for drawing it, but um, I thought that if he was playing this, he'd be playing Prosperity. So you can definitely dig a lot harder into the Avatar sort of thing, but then that kind of clashes with the trade and things like that. So it works and it doesn't at the same time sort of thing. Then there is the three raw sphere mode because no one respects the sphere mode, so they just walk into it. Um, also, it's one of those things where um, that plus the lava golem is great because you just have boards. Uh, cosmic because it's cosmic, you hit island, you hit other cards, um, they're not coming back. Uh, Secret village of the spellcaster, similar sort of thing. Um, there was a there was a runic bestial player there, um, and I believe Imseti is a spellcaster, so you summon the Imseti and activate this. And it's quite hard for them to out it. Soul release because it's soul release to hit five and get away. Uh, evenly matched. This deck can blind go in second. So yeah, it's really, really good. The second skill drain when he wants to take out the summon limits for it. And the one Tiki Boo because Mad Lad will definitely draw it every single game. Can't justify if he has or hasn't, but it does come up. And then for his extra deck, he plays the one Baron de Floor, one Cheng Ying, one Coach Soldier, one Dingrisu, one Zeus. One of the uh, Grunix Exceed number one, I think it is. Yeah, the Numeron Dragon, uh, the fake number one. Um, this actually comes up relatively well. I did see in one of these games where he nearly actually won because of uh, this card. Um, so for those of you that, that don't know, uh, once per turn during the standby phase, you can detach from material. Uh, once per turn during the standby phase, you can attach one card from your opponent's graveyard to this card as a material. You can only use this effect once per turn. If this card is X, XYZ summoned, you can look at your opponent's extra deck and send one card from uh, from there to the graveyard. Uh, you can detach one material from this card, target one face of card your opponent controls, destroy it. And then your opponent takes damage equal to uh, half that destroyed monster's attack. So this nearly won him a game. Um, the only issue was is the fact that the monster's attack just wasn't enough, um, but free burning is free burning. Um, one Hope Harbinger. One Sandal Fawn, which is slowly making its appearance back in the format, because if you can make rank 8s, this card is really, really good. This is um, 
is an honorary exorcist for effectively, where you want to return detached material from it until the end of your opponent's next turn. This card can't be destroyed by card effects. Also, neither player can special summon from the graveyard. So you summon a bunch of horror stuff back, make this, and um, yeah, the uh, <laughs> the Fire King matchup is kind of a little bit easier to win. Uh, one seven sins, this was just to put out more damage because you can rank up all your stuff to make this great. Uh, one pain gainer because this goes on top to make the seven sins and then you can make more Zeus stuff. Uh, another rank 8 toolbox in the form of the Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, the Numeron Dragon and the one SP. So all in all I do rate this deck quite well. Um, if I had the money I would invest in this. Um, I think the only tweaks as I said uh, that I would personally change to it is instead of playing the Avatar I would have played um, the Plasma for it instead because uh, I feel that that actually does a little bit more. Or if not, um, no, I think that's really it. Because it looks perfect beyond that. Um, maybe trade out the summon limits for skill drains um, and then have the summon limits sided because if you're not going first, summon limit kind of doesn't do as much as skill drain, I guess. Um, but beyond that, this is a very solid list and he did very well with it. Um, so... Uh, I tip my hat to you, Matt, and uh, I hope to see this deck in locals again. Um, hopefully you don't get sold released as well. Um, if any of you guys have any um, suggestions on how to make this deck better, please do suggest, because I don't know what this does completely. Well, I do know what it does, um, but I don't know how it can be improved on, because um, I haven't played this kind of um, version of Control, even though I have played Control for many, many years. Um, this is not really one of them. Uh, so yeah, I'll be signing it now. Peace.